five balls. These are amazing guys. But it was, it's, it was a... Where's Roger I think Robert it was a little bit of Better than Alex. The animators were, were absolutely priceless as well. You know, I, I think when you're working on a video game, or even now when we, we're seeing so much performance capture on film now too, like Avatar, you know? We did the exact same thing as the guys in Avatar. Are you ready, ready, number one? Yep. What's your name? Um, my name's Connor, and I just want to say first, thank you, because Red Dead got me out of a very dark place recently with being diagnosed with epilepsy. Um, obviously, I met Roger and Rob yesterday, and they had a good word with them about that, and they were so supportive. And then um, the question is, with the standoff in Chapter 6 of Be Barlow, how do you reckon it would have played out, say, if some of the others were alive, like Hosea, and some of the other gang members were there? Yeah, how would it have played out? If the, if the rest of the gang was around, would it, would it have played out differently? Well, I don't think... Uh, Dutch would not have... Uh, uh, the cheese might not have slid off the cracker had Hosea endured. Or at least, and I don't think he gets nearly enough credit, Lenny, who I think if you pay close attention, Lenny was clearly sort of being groomed to replace Hosea. But Lenny was one of the, the only voices in the camp who could disagree with Dutch without Dutch feeling as though uh, somebody had lost faith or in the case of somebody was doubting uh, Dutch, which uh, is not a thing that uh, Dutch. That was amazing. <laughs> so we need to two. Hi. Hello there, my name's Katrina. Huge fan, thank you so much for being here, guys. Um, my question is, if you had the chance to be a, an actor or a voice actor in another game or film, which would you choose? I'd love to work with Hideo Kojima. <laughs> yeah, these games are insane, man. How does he come up with them? Yeah, that, those, yeah, that would be cool. I would, I would love to work with Rockstar Games. <laughs> in a second, if they call, I would say, let's do it. Uh, there's a, a movie coming called Borderlands uh, that uh, I can't wait for you guys to see. I get to play Marcus in that, and uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. I trust that a heck of a cast. But honestly, uh, as an actor, I, I'm just looking forward to the next role, whatever it is. I, yeah, I mean, I think it would be cool to be in Stranger Things. Uh, I am also looking forward to hopefully uh, getting a call from Roster at some point, but we'll see. <laughs> Beautiful, it's an actually question, we love it. Thank Give a round much. of applause. Yeah. We're all about sharing the love on a beautiful Sunday morning. We're going to head on up to four. Hi. Hello, my name is Nina. Uh, I made games with a lot of first student, and Red Dead has been a huge inspiration for me in many ways. And um, I was wondering, other than acting, what kind of an involvement you had in the production, production of the game? Just as an example, did you have to, uh, did you get to have a say in what the characters would be wearing and such? That's a really good question. I no, though I will say that the renderings that I saw of Sadie, um, well, at first when I was cast, I had red hair, and she was redhead. And then over time, I think I was pink, blue, purple, that never happened. Uh, but once it became blonde again and I got to see what she really was going to look like, I noticed that in fact she was blonde. So maybe I had a little bit of influence, but not intentionally so. Cool. We're all good. Is that good? We're all happy? Beautiful. Give them a massive round of applause. Well done in that answer. Sliding on over to three, we are looking the cosplay for all our wonderful cosplay masqueraders today. Let's check out Harley Quinn up at the top. That's a good one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi all. Hi Alex, Ben, Roger. I don't believe we've met before. Rob, we've spoken before. I'm not sure if you remember me. Amber, you know. Your cosplay is too good. Thank Maybe you. We ain't get up closer. Maybe we'll recognize you. Thank you. I'll, I'll come to the bottom of the stage after that first ask this question. Um, if you were given the opportunity to switch places with your respective characters for one day, would you do it? Um, why? Why would you do it? 
I'd like to meet Charles Smith. I think Charles Smith is one of my favorite ones. He's awesome. He's loyal. He's strong as an ox. <laughs> 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 John is a grumpy, grumpy guy. There's a lot of reasons for that. I don't know if I want to be that or not. I, it's a great question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and why? Uh, duh. <laughs> yeah, that's a hard guess for me, too. Though, you know, I, I try to live some of my days with being the most Sadie I can be. So, but absolutely. You pulled that off. So, I want, the other thing about that, too, though, so if I become John for a day, that means John becomes me for a day. <laughs> <laughs> what would he do? There's no way. No, thank you. Oh, I, mis I misunderstood the question. Oh, you're with me being Arthur? No, thank you. Yeah. Haven't you seen the end? <laughs> <laughs> I, some people, I, I often ask people, I say, oh, which ending did you get? And they go, oh, I got the good one. I'm like, there's a good one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember doing that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't want to be a good no. <laughs> Maybe chapter two or three. <laughs> Thank you, Harley Quinn. What a sensational cosplay and a brilliant question. Oh, she's coming down to show you. There she is right now. Looking awesome. Cool. Say a big hi. Give everybody awesome. a big wave. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you just done. <laughs> we, love, we love you. We love you. We love you. Listen to one. Hi. Hi there. My name's Anthony. Question for the whole group. Um, which you prefer, the Red Dead Three films or game, whatever, going back to before Red Dead Two? And the collection of the gang, Cold Major School, and all that view there, ending in Blackwater, or Sims or Lost already, following Sadie, bouncing off the feet again, her own gang, going through the inner world, or actually flying to gunslingers after Red Dead 1. So, prequel or sequel? There's a correct answer. <laughs> well, a sequel doesn't do me any good. <laughs> no, it does none of us. Well, except you, Alex. <laughs> but then you get more into like, World War I territory, and I don't know, like the Western genre kind of faded out by that. It's such a, we get this question a lot, and it's a really good one. And the end, we don't know, but it's nice to speculate. Yeah, if maybe Jack Marston gets into the First World mm. War, that would be cool, but I don't know how much of a Western it would be. You're right, it's either going further back in time or a new brand new set of characters all together like Red Dead Redemption was from Red Dead Revolver who knows but uh, a prequel would be cool to finally fi find out what happened at the Blackwater Massacre that would be cool and I'd be delighted as I keep getting older to play Dutch as he keeps getting younger <laughs> maybe by the time I'm 60 I can play like 11 year old Dutch <laughs> Dutch talking back to his teacher at school. <laughs> I don't want to read Evelyn Miller. <laughs> the wonders of PCAP, yeah, man. It's totally possible. We love it. Dutch is Benjamin Button. Yes, we'll go for that. Thank you so much for your question. We've, we've got a lot to get through. We've literally only got 13 minutes. I'm so sorry, but thank you so much for your question. Yes or no? Oh, sorry, we missed that. And we're gonna, sorry about that. We're gonna slide them over to two. Hi. Hi, my name's Tyler. I've got a question for Benjamin. Um, if Dutch actually used the money we donated to the box and it went to defeat it, what do you think he would have done with it? Tyler, that's a, a fine question. I do sense some doubting. <laughs> <laughs> I think that he would use the money at his discretion uh, for what he determined was the best for everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. The best rule is, don't question Dutch. Just leave him as he is. Thank you. Give a round of applause to Tyler. Hey, to the floor. Hi. Uh, my name is Jay, and this is for the whole panel. Um, if Micah hadn't joined the gang, do you think Dutch still would have led everyone to their deaths? Not everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a good question. As Ben said earlier, you know, when the vacuum that, that Hosea's death created definitely 
was not good for the gang, you know, and it was like Hosea was the good angel, and then Micah is the devil over the other shoulder, and once the angel was gone, then the devil had a louder voice, you know, but it's such a good question, it, it, the whole dynamic changes drastically. Uh, I know a lot of people are curious whether or not Micah really was the rat or not, even though know, Milton could have been fibbing, I've heard that, uh, I've heard that theory a few times, but I don't know, what do you guys think? He was the rat. It wasn't. It wasn't Molly. I, I don't think it was Molly. It wasn't Strauss either. Some people think it was Abigail, but I don't think she would have put John's life at risk that like that. Not a chance. Or or Jacks for that matter. I don't see Abigail doing that. And come on, Peter. Mike is Mike is the rat. <laughs> it was Micah, right? Yeah. There you go. You got it. Well done. Thank you so much for your question. Give her a applause. Come on. Wait. Shut up. We've got a light, a rocket under you guys. It's going to be an epic day here with us at Comic Con Liverpool. We've got about 10 minutes left, guys, so I must apologize if we don't get through to every question, but we will try our very, very hardest. Heading up to three. Hi. Hi, um, my name's Sarah, and um, I think my question's more for uh, Benjamin, but I think everyone at the same time. Um, it's that um, you've all played your characters so well, there's like real tears throughout the game. And um, I was just wondering if you treat it differently based on the character that you play from your co-stars and also from people you just see in the street and stuff. If I understand the question, uh, it's one of the reasons why voice actor is such a mischaracterization of what we did. Because we were all together. So just like in any scene, you know, acting ultimately is about listening. and. You know, it's an interesting thing, too, about playing a character who has the kind of power that Dutch wields. A lot of that isn't up to me to portray. A lot of that is up to the, the cast that I'm working with, and they demonstrate the, the power of that character. But uh, I, I hope to answer your question. Everything, the affection that we still have for each other that we built over all the years working so closely together, I think reads in every scene that we do. And, I, and maybe the perfect example of it is one of the scenes when we were all, all of us together as a gang. The, the opening scene is one of those where everybody was there, but another one is when uh, Jack comes back uh, from uh, Bronte and we're all sitting and Gabrielle's playing the guitar and we're sitting around and singing. That was all of us there that day. Yeah. And the energy that you feel moving between us was built over years of working alongside each other. Um, so again, I, I hope I'm answering your question, but of course, uh, who you're opposite in a scene yeah. is going to inform the emotion of it. Yeah, what I was thinking is because um, obviously you play quite an antagonistic character um, who changed a lot throughout the game and become quite negative in people's lives and stuff like that. And I was just wondering if fans and stuff like that, or even just people who maybe have just played the game and just recognised from something, have treated you more negatively, negatively based on that because you've played Dutch so well. Uh, nobody treats me negatively. Yeah. But uh, uh, one thing though I will say is that I, I was really particular about a lot of things, I still am. <laughs> but where I would sit on a certain day, uh, my ritual of doing the New York Times crossword puzzle, and the, the actor, do you remember the name of the actor who played uh, uh, O'Driscoll? Don't, no. He was a wonderful guy, he came in just for a few days, but the first day he came in, I don't know if somebody tipped him off or it just happened naturally, but he sat in my seat. <laughs> and then he finished the New York Times, the Tuesday puzzle, if I recall, I do, he finished it before me. So I was very unhappy with him, and I leaned into that. Don't be finishing those crossword puzzles. Give him a massive round of applause! We're going to slide down to one. Hi. Hi, um, my name is Sophie. This is aimed at Rob. Is Jack, um, is Jack John's your son? Would you not get off? <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks like Javier. <laughs> 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 he really is. And I think, and I think this too. I mean, I guess John did come around to that the idea of that right away, um, which, I, I mean, I guess you wouldn't be proud of if you did eventually come around to the idea of 
that is my son. You would never forgive yourself, I don't think, for, uh, for hesitating. But, um, yes, I do. And I can't prove that, but I just want you to know that I do think that. <laughs> All good. All good. Give a round of applause. Honestly thought she was going to provide you with a paternity test then. <laughs> oh, it's a two. Hi. Caroline. Um, well, my initial question kind of got asked before, so I got another one. Um, that's for all of you. Uh, besides your character, obviously, who is your favorite gang member as, you know, as viewers, as spectators, as gamers as well? I think Roger may have answered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I like Charles. He's pretty cool. Yeah. I guess... Uh... Arthur Morgan. It's hard for me to, I mean, honestly, but it, it's because of, uh, I mean, I know the story, right? But I'm thinking it as a, from a, my perspective of playing the game. So, yeah, Arthur Morgan. Javier Escuela is pretty cool, too. They both saved him. Be pretty happy with that. Uh, Jim Santangeli is Pearson is pretty wonderful. All of his scenes, he makes some magic in, particularly like him. Tiger hunting. With a tiger. He's a funny guy. Very funny <laughs> I'm gonna go with Charles. Charles. Yes. 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 No we have some Charles fans in the house. Ah! Oh, I'll be sure. Sure. I mean, truly a phenomenal actor and a delight to work with. Great question, Caroline. Round of applause for her. We've got five minutes left, guys, so we might be able to get one, maximum two in. We're gonna shoot up to four. Hi guys, Scott here. Thank you all for being here. Um, unfortunately, we never got to see a behind the scenes footage of what you were doing with mocap. So my question is, what scene had the most outtakes because you just couldn't get your lines right or you were just joking with each other or it was a struggle and it was just one of those days? This should be good. Let's see what I can. I know he's got one, but I'll come in with one real quick. This one was for me. I don't know if you remember, but there's the first mission to Valentine. You go with the girls, and then uh, I believe Karen gets in trouble with a John, and he starts beating up on her, and Arthur goes in to rescue her. Well, if you're playing that, and if you go into one of the wrong rooms first, there's a guy on the crapper, and he's straining, and Arthur interrupts him, and you're like, oh, sorry about that, you know? <laughs> Anyways. Like, we did that. Well, he had his mocap suit on. I mean, he wasn't naked or anything. He sat on this makeshift toilet, and he's doing the appropriate sounds, and I couldn't get through it. Because he was too good at it. And I was just walking in, and he was like, Ugh! Ugh! I couldn't stop laughing, man. Yeah, there were some that were bad cause, for me, that were bad because of me laughing or something, but most of them were bad. That The ones that were bad were because I just couldn't spit the line out. Couldn't do it. And I, I don't know if we did this one 20 some times or what it was, but... I don't know what you did. 20 times, probably. Yeah. Try it again, and I'd go back. Can you do it now? Do you remember the line now? Just try to think of it. <laughs> so, uh... I think I know. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's nothing, there's nothing like <laughs> the man who's recently kidnapped your son to disrupt your sense of peace and well-being. <laughs> Where were you then, man? <laughs> and what was the other one? We shouldn't have stopped for brunch, oh. brunch. <laughs> well, I had to play Milton. <laughs> Kept calling me Butch. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't muff the tape. Like, I'd go on with the tape. He'd call me Butch, and we'd fix it in post, and I'd carry on. But then this one... <laughs> I told you we shouldn't have had a brunch with Dante. And then he goes, get out of here, Butch! <laughs> and I'm like, I can't. I can't. I'll be in my trailer. <laughs> I didn't have that experience of you. We used to do a little dance when we get it on one or two takes. Right. And a whole thing. Yeah. And then we started to get a little bit, um, like, 
Yeah, like we just had to do it every time, otherwise we were worried that we weren't going to keep getting it one or two. Yeah. Thank you, question. Excellent job. Well done, well done, number four. We're going to finish it off with number one. Hi. Hi, I'm Nicole. Um, this is for all of you. What has been the most rewarding thing for all of you, whether that would be less fans or during the process of the game? Also, Roger, can you say Lenny for us, please? Lenny! <laughs> sure. <laughs> that's surely worth the price of admission. Uh, that's a great question. Thank you. But there, no doubt, it's the fans. And I know that we all feel that way. It's amazing. And, and the, the, the art from this community, the cosplay from this community, the fact that you all sort of find each other, that our artwork can be a part of uh, all of you building beyond it and past it. It is overwhelming to be a, just a small piece of what you guys are doing. It really is humbling. My dad used to scream at me to get off the Nintendo back in the 80s. And so many of you have come to us and you've told us about how this game helped you develop a relationship with your father or your uncle or your grandfather or your mother. And the fact that our work has helped bring you guys together is something that I never anticipated. And you truly honor us when you tell us these stories and we're so happy that it meant that much to you. And so many of you have talked about deceased and bereaved relatives and friends and it just makes our heart burst. So thank you guys. Well, from the cast, to the fans, to the whole community, we are one big Red Dead Redemption family. And I want to say a massive, massive thank you for everything that you have done. Give them a massive round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to do something really, really special to close it out. Would you like to get the world's biggest Red Dead Redemption 2 selfie? Yeah. Shall we give it a go? So if we can, if you are able, can we please invite you to be outstanding? Oh, Bring God. yourselves in, and if you can scoot <laughs> yourselves in down towards our middle oh, section. God.